Okay, peeps. Welcome back. So today we're going to be going over the Grayscale Trusts and how some of them are just absolutely exploding along with Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. So with that being said, let's get it. Okay, so first thing is Bitcoin. As you guys can see, it looks very bullish. Uh, we're getting a little overheated on the RSI on the four early time frame, but still bullish. Nonetheless, you can see the EMA is expanding. Uh, we're getting very close to getting back above 65,000, which is kind of a big deal. So pretty much getting this big boost here puts us right smack dab in the middle of this critical support, which as you guys know, 60,000 is a big, big level of support for Bitcoin. So we're about to get a close here on the daily. This is a hammer candle. Just so you all know, if it closes like this, that is extremely bullish, especially with the close of this hammer candle being higher than this previous candle here, which indicates to me that potential further upside is still to come. Uh, once we get that close on the daily and on the weekly time frame, you can see just this absolutely monster move right off the bottom of this flag. Uh, so we're very clearly still respecting this flag. Uh, we did actually get back above this level here. So this breakdown did actually turn out to be some kind of uh, basically uh, bear trap pretty much is what this is. So that covers Bitcoin. And as you guys know, some of the altcoins have been going back up. Uh, we did actually buy some altcoins. We also bought 100 shares of Mara this morning. So you guys can see that the miners just have absolutely been skyrocketing, just going straight through the stratosphere. It's kind of insane, actually, just how bullish these things are. Um, I mean, literally a couple of days ago, Cypher was at like four or five dollars. Now it's up to six seventy eight. I mean, you can see this insane candle that just absolutely shredded resistance here. Uh, Mars is another one. Obviously, you can see just how insane these moves are. So very, very bullish on the Bitcoin miners. Just to sh just to show you that uh, we do actually have Mari. You can see the sell call here and the. 100 shares, which is currently up 7.5% on the day. So current price 26.54, uh, average price 24.69. So we're up 7.5% on this as of currently. Plus we have the options at play. So that also creates some income. So let's go ahead and go over the Grayscale Trust now that we've covered that. Um, and again, the reason why we're going over Bitcoin more often in the Grayscale Trust videos is because um, the entire crypto market, it doesn't matter what it is, the miners, the grayscale trusts, the uh, yield max ETFs that are crypto related like MSTY, uh, CONY, MicroStrategy, Coinbase, Square, um, the altcoin market, it all moves based on what Bitcoin does. So it, it does matter. It's significant. So LTCN, you can see that this thing did actually move up quite a bit. The biggest gainers on the day were obviously uh, GXLM and MANA, so huge gains. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe a few of these were actually double digits at some point during the day, but then they kind of went back down somewhat. So um, LTCN has moved up a little bit. As you can see, we're about to get that golden cross on the RSI, so that's bullish. I will reiterate one more time that I think support's going to be roughly about 18 to $19, somewhere in there. Because again, basically $19 as we're riding this trend line as support uh, puts us out a few weeks, so it has a chance to kind of bob around that area before potentially taking off. So you can also see it does look like the EMAs are curling up on the daily time frame, which is very bullish. Okay, we want to see something like that. So this double bottom formation or W pattern, and then a curling up of the EMAs, that's always an early indication of a potential um, bullish breakout coming here soon. So resistance still going to be between 24 to 27. The target you're looking for is all the way up here at 54. Again, not financial advice. You guys can do what you want to with your own money. So from current price to the resistance zone, 18%. And then all the way up to the swing high up here is 135%. Again, the targets above and beyond that, which we'll talk about when we get to it, is 75, 100 to 135, 3 to 400. And then the all-time high, which is 510. And then we can talk about targets above and beyond that. So that's LTCN. Uh, BCHG, you can see we actually are above the EMAs at this point, but still below the resistance zones. So uh, kind of stuck in between the two. We'll just kind of have to see how this plays out over time. But because we haven't gotten a close above resistance yet, this is not actually a flip zone. So RSI is about to go bullish, as you can see. 
uh, based on this time frame, I would still say likely that the support down here is going to be support. So um, 680 to about 780. I mean, you could use the EMAs as support too, about 10 to $11 somewhere in there, but I would be looking for a bigger pullback if it was me. So top of this resistance zone, 1280, and then you have 1810. Uh, to about 2010 and then $24 respectively all the way up there at the highs. So if I go down to the daily time frame, you can actually see that we are starting to get a golden cross here. This is always a good sign and the price is above the EMAs. Usually how this works, usually, okay? When we get a golden cross on the EMAs and the price gets above it, there's usually some kind of retest, okay? So you can see, uh, well, maybe not exactly perfectly, but you can see back here. So we got a golden cross. Uh, well, it's not exactly perfect, but we got one like way back here, right? So you get your golden cross back here, it rips up and what does it do? It comes back, retests, goes up, retests, goes up, retests. And at some point it starts to really take off as you guys can see right here. But what does it do after that? It comes back to the EMAs. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, again, the EMAs serve as a mean reversion tool, meaning that the price will at some point always come back to them. So pretty much what we're looking for here in terms of targets, top of this resistance at 1270, and then you have 18 to about $20, and once again, 24 respectively, as I said before. So from the current price, you'd be looking at 11, roughly about 12% at that first target. Um, if we get to the top of this resistance, 75%, and then all the way up at the swing high, roughly about 109% move. However, if you want to wait for a pullback all the way down here, then it would change to 74%, uh, 175%, and 230% respectively. So big difference there. Again, it's up to you whether you want to wait or not. So HN. Uh, this thing does still look like it's on the verge of a breakout, but it could also reject. If it does reject, probably going to come back down to 390 to 420. If it breaks out, then you'd be looking at uh, 690 to about $8 and then 10 and a half at the high up there. So from current prices to the first swing high, 40% and then 82% respectively. If we get a pullback within this wedge, which is totally normal, that can happen. 97% and then all the way up to 156% move. And once again, on a lot of these trusts, you can see the EMAs on the RSI starting to move up again and get that golden cross confirmation, which is always a good sign for these. So ETCG, we are still stuck in between this channel. I suspect the Ethereum related products are going to stay this way until we see some probably at least a couple of weeks of trading of the spot E3 ETFs. Again, the, I did tell you guys about the news yesterday. So um, until we see at least in my opinion, probably two to four weeks of trading with those and these big money institutions buying up tons and tons and tons of ETH, I suspect we're probably going to stay in the zone. Uh, and then when Ethereum is ready to break out and it does, then all of a sudden we'll be skyrocketing. So um, 11 to 13, in my opinion, would be the buy zone as of right now. Above that, you're looking at 16 and then all the way up here at 20. So, I mean, it's within this channel. You guys can do what you want to with that. So 27% here and then 60% respectively. If you manage to get it somewhere lower in the channel, uh, it makes a big difference. So 40% to about 76%. ETH E, so this one did have a double top and then it bounced off support again and then went back up. Again, that is on the, um, in my opinion, I could be wrong about this. Uh, so we have a golden cross on the RSI. I could be wrong about this, but I believe the reason why it went up so fast and came out of that support is because of the news of the listing or the trading that's actually supposed to happen um, on the spot E3DFs by July 23rd, which is a week from now, so not that long. So cup and handle pattern here, confirmation breakout. And again, the target is all the way up here at the highs. So roughly about $47. You can see it matches up almost perfectly with that previous peak up there. Um, I'll say once again, that support is going to be roughly about $25 to $29. Swing high up here at 47, which also coincidentally is the target for the cup and handle and the previous, um, it's not actually the all time high. I don't think it is the all time high, but the previous swing high, no. Definitely not the all-time high. So from here to 
that target, you'd be looking at about 45%. If you manage to get lucky and get a pullback, then it would then become 76%. So Phil G, uh, this one is recovering slightly. Again, I I mean, I could be wrong about this. Maybe once the spot E3 ETFs, ETFs actually start trading, then these things, we get the alt season and these things start popping off. But uh, from a technical perspective, this just doesn't look super bullish to me because again, we kind of like, we had, it looked like it was going to maybe stop here. And then we had this lower red candle here. And now we're desperately trying to stay above there. And I'm just not so sure about it. So plus it's holding down below the EMAs. It's always a bearish sign. Uh, so in my opinion, I still think 37 to 40 is going to be a buy target. Again, you could buy at the lows of these candles at roughly 54. You don't have to buy down in that zone. So the all time high up here is roughly about $400. And then we have this inverse cup in or inverse head and shoulders pattern, which is a bullish pattern, $300. But, uh, I'm not really so sure that's really even relevant because the all time high is higher than that. So 940% move here. Uh, GBAT, we're getting close to the apex of this move. Um, in my opinion, I think it's probably more likely to break out to the upside. I don't think we're going to see a swing down because if we were, we would have gotten below support down here, but you can see very clearly it was not going down. There were buyers just sitting there waiting to scoop this thing up. So again, support is between eight to $10 and the swing high up here is at 32. In order to get to 32, we got to get past that 18 to $19 range. So from the current price to the swing high, roughly about 220%. If you manage to scoop it up down here at these kind of local lows at, I don't know, about eight, 850 or so, it then becomes 290%. So big, big, big difference there. And once again, a lot of these uh, trusts, you can see the RSI EMAs are about to either cross bullish on the weekly or they already have crossed bullish on the weekly. Um, I mean, really a lot of them. So it seems like maybe all of these are going to go up at once. It's hard to say. So um, GLIV, again, this inverse head and shoulders pattern here, uh, the target would be $84, or $84, which is pretty much right around the all-time highs. In my opinion, if this thing does get a, a candle close above the all-time highs up here at 81 at the top of this wick, I don't think this target really matters because I think it's just going to blast off to the moon. And it's going to completely disrespect that inverse head and shoulders target and kind of just smash right past it because that's what crypto does. Um, so once again, because we're below the EMAs, below this trend line, we have not gotten back above it yet. Uh, I would still say this support down here would be the target. So roughly about 1170 to 1450 and then $80 all the way up at the high. So if you manage to get it down here, swing it all the way up to the high, it's 500% gain. Um, but let's just say your average cost basis is around these EMAs and you've been buying regardless and you're like, I don't care about that. I think it's going to go way past 80. This thing is going to go up to like a thousand dollars or whatever. Uh, then, you know, just to get to the highs at this point would still be 225%. So really, really good return. Uh, so G link, this thing hasn't really moved a lot, but it does look like it wants to break out. So you can see this candle poking its head above that trend line there. That's always bullish. Uh, so I'll do this one of two ways. I'll measure from the breakout area to the highs and then from support to the highs. So support is 65 to 85. Um, so from pretty much the breakout point, that's if this is confirmed in three days, all the way up to the high up there is 106% move. If you manage to get it somewhere around the middle of the zone, $75, let's say to the high would then become 197%. I would say this one looks pretty bullish. It, it does actually look like it wants to break out. And Chainlink is a very popular project. Everybody in crypto loves Chainlink. Okay, so GSAW, uh, this thing did actually move up a little bit today, so it's looking even more bullish. Again, if this weekly candle closes above these highs right here, which is the structure level, I would say it's probably going to push for the all-time highs, uh, which is at 570. Personally, I wouldn't be looking. I wouldn't be looking to buy GSAW because it's already had its move, in my opinion. I mean, if it drops which, you know, due to some kind of black swan event or something, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but the drop would be absolutely heinous. So I would not be looking to go all in up here at the top. That's just my opinion. But um, on the flip side, if it does end up breaking the all-time highs, we can take a look at what that would look like. 
which seems like the more likely scenario in my mind at this point. So $830 would be your first target there. When we get to that, we can talk about what comes next. So that's GSOL for you. Um, oh, before I forget, uh, once again, for anybody that's new to the channel, the support is going to be roughly about 166 to 205 down there in that green box. So GXLM, this thing just absolutely destroyed the EMAs and uh, just barely got stopped at this wedge here. So you, you can see that this thing was not playing around. I don't know what the heck happened here, but it clearly just moonshot like crazy and went bullish. So some kind of squeeze, maybe I'm not sure. Um, if this confirms at these levels or anywhere near these levels, I would say this bottom trend line then becomes your support. So probably somewhere between 34 to 36 bucks is what I'd be looking at. And then the top of this resistance. So 58, and then all the way up there at 70. So just from the current price, uh, you'd be looking at about 35% and then 60-ish percent respectively. If it comes back down to the lower trend line here, it'd be about 69% and uh, just shy of 100% respectively. Again, this was a rising wedge, uh, kind of an odd looking rising wedge channel type thing. And it did get a breakdown, but again, it does look like that was some kind of bear trap. Uh, crypto is just very sneaky like that. You really never know what you're going to get in crypto. So um, the RSI is potentially having a golden cross here on Mana. So Mana was also another big squeezer on the day. You can see we got above this support, although it has yet to be confirmed. Uh, still got to get above the EMAs also to confirm that this thing truly is going to break out. So uh, I would still say support is down here at 7, 1760 uh, to 2035. You may possibly get one more move down before the um, before the uh, spot Ether ETF trading begins. And I say that usually because, I mean, you know, thinking about it from a psychological, a psychological perspective, if I was Wall Street and I wanted to make sure I got the cheapest prices for as long as possible, I would try to push this thing down one more time either right the day before up to the day before it was actually going to start trading on the spot ether ETFs, or maybe a couple of weeks into the trading, but I would want to get at least one more push down to fill my bags a little bit more. And then boom, it takes off to the moon. You guys got to learn to think like the big guys. Um, what you do, you'll start to kind of realize, um, I, I mean, I can't guarantee this is my opinion, but it, in my opinion, I think it will probably help. Um, it, I'll just, I'm not going to speak for you guys. I'll just say this. It, I feel like it has helped me become a veteran trader and, and investor understanding how a lot of the smart money thinks. So from the current prices to the all-time high, um, you're looking at about 216%. If we get a pullback into the support, which again, this could happen one last time before we moonshot, that that's possible. It wouldn't surprise me. So 264% move there on mana. Uh, Zcash, this thing is really want to go up. So it's above the EMAs, above supports. So we just need a confirmation on the weekly. Um, once again, the daily has confirmed, as you can see, that little tiny candle right above the support zone there, but the weekly still has yet to confirm. If it confirms, the target is going to be up here between eight to uh, about 960. And Zcash itself has actually been moving up quite a bit. So a 10 and a quarter there. St support still between 440 to roughly about 510. Uh, we'll just measure it from here to the swing high. So 87%. And then let's say from the support here to top of resistance, 97%. And then the swing high, 111%. And actually, just so you guys know that, uh, just so you guys can see for yourself that I'm actually telling you the truth on this. I mean, look at this huge, fat, ridiculous green candle on Zcash. Uh, yeah, that was a big move. So I would not be surprised if... Um, the Grayscale Trust version of this just started spiking out of nowhere. Again, in one week, it went up 55%, so it's kind of a big deal. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Peace.